Hi everyone, so last week we had a look at uh, some stocking plans for a 200 litre reef aquarium and this week we're going to take a look at some stocking plans for a 500 litre aquarium. Now because it's the, in the 500 litre you've got a little bit more space, there's a little bit more flexibility on the plan and you've got a lot more options. So we're just going to cover some examples of fish that you can have in each of the setups and there is a lot more alternative options for each of these as well. So moving on with that, we're going to have a look at plan A and have a look at the more traditional kind of stocking that you'd expect to see in a 500 litre mixed tank. Okay, so first of all, we're going to have a look at tangs that you can have in a 500 litre reef aquarium. Now there is a few tangs which will need a thousand litres or two thousand litres, but the vast majority of tangs are relatively happy in a 500 litre tank. And it's often the reason that people get a 500 litre reef tank it's specifically because they want to keep lots of tangs in it. Now tangs come from six main genus and if you're mixing tangs from each of those genus you don't tend to get too many problems. It only starts becoming more difficult when you're trying to mix two tangs of the same genus. Now out of the six genus, one of which the saw tails, and they aren't really imported, they're mostly from the eastern Atlantic Ocean and so they're not really seen common in the trade, they all tend to get quite large and pretty much never going to see one outside a public aquarium. So out the other five genus you've got um, quite a variety of tangs to choose from there. So you've got the Paracanthus which contains the regal tangs and that is monotypic so that means that's the only species in that genus. So regal tangs you can be pretty sure will get on with most other things. 500 litres is enough space even for adults I do recommend that you keep them in pairs or groups rather than singly though. They, you'll see a massive difference in behaviour if they're kept as a pair and you can add any two even with if they're vastly different in size and you shouldn't really get any squabbling even if you put one in and then add another one later. So one or two regal tangs there will make a great addition to the tank. If you can keep them as a pair, I said obviously it's, it's a lot better. So that's, that's the first genus. The second one we'll look at is the Nassau tangs. Now most of the Nassau tangs will get way too big for a 500 litre aquarium. Lipsticks and blonde lipsticks, although they do get quite large, in the wild they shoal very tightly and they're used to being hemmed in by other members of the shoal. So they're nowhere near as active as a lot of the other species of tangs and they don't tend to mind being crammed in a little bit because that's what would happen in the wild and be used to restrictive maneuverability and things like that. So again you could be looking at Nassau tangs, the most common ones and the only ones really going to squeeze into 500 litres would be the lipstick tangs or the blonde lipsticks. You can't mix the two because they can be aggressive to each other. You sometimes get away with it but very rarely so, especially in a small tank like, like this. So again this is a species where it's best kept two or more of as well and a pair of lipstick tangs will look fantastic cruising around in the tank. The third genus we're going to look at is bristle tooth tangs. Now we covered some of these last week. Uh, things like the yellow eye coal tang and the tamini tang. These are quite happy, the vast majority of these in a 200 litre aquarium. But you can keep them in a 500 as well. Generally we'd say just keep one bristle tooth tang in a tank. But if you add several at the same time, all around the same size, you get a little bit of squabbling for a day or two, but they'll settle down quite well. We sometimes add 20 or 30 at a time in a four foot stock tank here in the shop. And as long as they all go in together and they're all roughly the same size, you can mix all the bristle tooth tangs and different species of them in together without too much problems. If you're going to go for one of the more aggressive bristle tooth tangs, like the Hawaiian Chevron, then you probably want to keep it to just a single bristle tooth in there but most of the others can all be mixed fairly easily. The fourth genus we're going to look at is Zebrasoma. Now this, this is a bit more difficult. Uh, things like sailfin tanks can get extremely large. Black tanks and gem tanks can be quite expensive and out of the budget of most average fish keepers. So this really narrows it down to a choice of uh, three uh, Zebrasoma tanks. We're going to be looking at the Scopaz, the purple or the yellow. Now the yellow tang we don't actually import because we have concerns over the, the way that they catch, the unsustainability of the level of fat that they catch each year compared to the wild population. So um, as far as we're concerned you're just down to the purple and the scopas. 
uh, purple is a little bit more expensive coming out of the Red Sea and often try and ship through Sri Lanka as well so a little bit more freight costs and a little bit more expensive fish but they're pretty chilled out and they get on with most other tanks fairly easily the Scopas are okay but they can be quite aggressive as with the yellow as well if you do get a yellow can be quite aggressive so if you're going to put a Scopas or a yellow in maybe stick to a smaller specimen and make it one of the last ones to go in now the last genus we're going to look at is the cantharous tanks now these are things like the powder blue the white cheek and mimic tang lieutenant tang and things like that now a lot of these can get quite large and they do need quite a large amount of space for their size things like Achilles and so horse you're going to be looking at a thousand litre minimum easy and really with things like Achilles and Sohars they'd be better off in the 2000 litre but some of the smaller cantharous can be kept in a 500 litre tank bear in mind that these are some of the more difficult tanks to keep they come in from the wild with a lot of infections already so quarantining them is absolutely critical you also want to watch for aggression because they're much more aggressive and they're much more active now if you're going to keep the cantharous tanks in a 500 litre and you can just put one in there and that will be relatively easy to add in again it wants to worry one of the last fish to go in or if you want to keep several of them then they need to be of roughly similar size and go in at around the same time if you are trying to add a cantharous tanks or trying to add other fish after a cantharous tanks then it's worth doing the mirror trick as well to limit aggression so with that you get a mirror, put it on the outside of the tank facing inwards on one end and leave it there for three days. Any aggressive fish within the tank could become so fixated with attacking or defending against their reflection that they'll often leave all the newcomers alone, which will take the pressure off. This is quite useful if you're adding any aggressive fish to a tank that already contains something that could turn a bit of a bully on them. Now at the cantharous tanks we want to keep to the smaller ones for the 500 litre tank and my personal favourite choices there would be something like the white cheek tang which is really pretty fish and much more chilled out than a lot of the other tangs or one of the mimic tangs which are really pretty and you get to see the colour change as they get larger. Now once you've so chosen all your tanks and there is quite a huge selection to choose from there then next we're going to look in the stock and plan for different rasses that you can put into a 500 litre tank. Okay, so next we're going to have a look at rasses for the 500 litre. And there's quite a lot of choices, as many thousands of species of rasses to choose from. So it could be quite bewildering. The most popular choice would be the Halicorus rasses. Now some of them, such as the Basket ras or Checkerboard ras, do get quite large. So you'd probably only want a single specimen of those. A lot of the smaller rasses like uh, Redline Rass, Halicorus Barcelatus, only gets to around 4 inches on a male and 2.5 to 3 inches on a female typically. And they can be added in groups as well. The rasses are a very useful thing to have in a reef aquarium because they will take out a lot of pests like bristle worms and flat worms and even eat small nudie branches as well. I'd avoid things that are going to get too big or a little bit too destructive. Some of the chorus rasses would get a little bit too large and often turn a lot of rocks over and cause a little bit of damage as they get bigger. So while they're great in a bigger tank, in this size of tank, especially if you've got a lot of LPS on the sand, probably not the ideal choice. I also look at the yellow chor chorus rass, yellow chorus chrysoris. It's a very popular rass and again it stays relatively small and can be kept in groups. As well as that, you can also look at things like the cleaner rasses, either the standard cleaner rass, or like uh, more unusual specimens like the wandering cleaner rass. The wandering cleaner rass, you have to be a little bit careful because it can nip its corals when it gets bigger. But standard cleaner rasses make a great addition for a tank this size, and especially if you've got a lot of tangs, they'll go around cleaning up the skin, any little nicks to the fins can be quite entertaining. Some people do struggle to keep cleaner rats in captivity, but it's really quite straightforward. Their mouths are very small, so if you're feeding predominantly on larger foods such as misers, they're going to struggle to get food which will fit into their mouth. Include a small food, such as uh, Ocean Nutrition's Marine Mix, which has a variety of foods in it, or something like frozen cyclops or a little bit of frozen daphnia even. 
which will fit easily into the mouths of a small rat. You can feed them, make sure that they get these small foods at least twice a day and that will keep them healthy and fit and you'll soon get them growing away quite nicely. Uh, cleaner rats can also be kept in pairs and again you'll see much more interesting behaviour if you keep two of them than just keeping a single specimen. Other options for rasses would include uh, other related species as well. So consider things like some of the smaller hogfish. There's quite a lot of hogfish that only get to 4 or 5 inches. And yes, they will eat any shrimps or crabs in the aquarium. So if you are going to keep shrimps or crabs, that would rule them out. But if you're not keeping shrimps or crabs, they're an excellent addition to the tank. They're a very efficient predator with things like bristle worms. And they're quite entertaining in their character. You get to see the colour change from juveniles into adults as well. Also, and slightly controversially, you could consider some of the parrotfish species. There are a couple of parrotfish species that eat only algae and they won't touch corals. Things like the bicolor parrotfish or the boys parrotfish are fairly safe additions to the reef aquarium. Now eventually they can get extremely large, but they grow so incredibly slowly, it's not really too much of an issue. Most parrotfish species you'd be struggling to get more than an inch a year in growth so if you've got a relatively small specimen and generally they are quite small when imported because the adults are much harder to catch and live in generally deep water they will last in the tank for many many years before you'd ever have to think about rehoming them. Fairy rafts are also a great addition they can get picked on by some of the other fish if you're not careful so make sure you choose a species that's reasonably robust and isn't going to get too easily intimidated. Some fairy rasses can get quite large, 10 inches or more, so be careful which choice, which species you choose. Things like the orange flank fairy rouse or solar fairy rouse, a great addition, topping out at around 4 inches. They can be kept in groups as well, of mixed sexes or all of one sex. People often only keep the males, but you can keep the females in there with them as well if you wanted to and they make a really great splash of colour and often have colours that you rarely see on marine fish whites and maroons and bright oranges which are less common on the other fish that you'd be looking at in a typical stocking plant. Next we're going to be looking at some of the small fish that you could put into the tank to complement and add a bit more variety compared to just being stocked with quite large fish. So in terms of small fish, most of these you're going to be adding as single specimens, but things like Bangai Cardinals you could keep in a pair or a large group, or Firefish which would be great in pairs or several pairs as well. So that would give you some bulk on numbers on small species if you did want to bulk them up. After that most people are looking at single fish, and there's a wide variety of different gobies that you can keep in the tank this size, uh, it's almost unlimited on number. There's a huge range of different shrimp gobies you could have, such as the yellow watchman goby, the wheeler's shrimp goby, and various other kinds of shrimp goby. Generally all the shrimp gobies will get along pretty well. Some of the very large species like the yellow watchmans, which can get to 5, 6, 7 inches at full size, can sometimes bully off you to keep also keeping the smaller species like the black rays, which only get to about an inch. So that's worth considering that you want to keep them all to roughly the same kind of adult size. You can keep quite a large range of shrimp gobies in the tank. And you can pair those up with pistol shrimps as well, which is probably one of the most entertaining combinations you can have in a reef aquarium. After that, there's also quite a lot of coral gobies you can consider. You have to be a little bit careful if you're keeping them with SPS because they can strip the branches sometimes to lay eggs. Having said that, the damage is usually fairly minimal and the coral will usually recover fairly well. You can keep quite a lot of coral gobies in a tank this size, up to a couple per cubic foot of tank space, no problem at all. And there's half a dozen different colours to choose from, with the yellows or the greens being the most common. But you also get various other shades of green, and you get maroons and blacks and silvers. People often try and collect one of every colour. It's quite entertaining, they've got bags of character. And being so small, they prevent they add a lot way of adding a lot of fish to the tank without increasing the bio load very much. You can also add other small gobies as well, things like the cave gobies, uh, of various kinds of those, and there's a few others that you could add which would be great in the reef aquarium. They all stay small, 
and we'll add more color and movement and uh, just generally fill the reef out a little bit. It's also worth having a look at dotty backs for the reef aquarium. They sometimes get a bit of a bad rep, but this is because they're quite territorial when they're defending their territory, but their territory is relatively small. And I said that if you stick one in a 50 litre tank, it's going to try and claim nearly the whole tank for itself, and that's where often people run into problems with aggression. In a larger tank, you don't really get this issue, and especially if you stick to the smaller species, such as the strawberry dotty back, or the royals, or something like that. Generally, it's one dotty back per tank. The only exception to that really would be if you were keeping uh, orchid dotty back, Pseudocrobus free mano, where pairs can easily be maintained. And because they're able to switch sex from male to female and back again, any two small ones will turn into a pair. And if you're very lucky, you might even get them to spawn within the aquarium. You could also consider things like a royal grammar as well, but they generally get a little bit larger and a little bit more aggressive and uh, you need to be a little bit more careful if you're adding other small cave dwellers such as shrimp gobies or firefish with them. Okay, so if you're not going for a mixed reef aquarium and you're not going to include some LPS and SPS in there and you're just going to stick to uh, soft corals, particularly if you're not too worried about having zoos, then there's a huge variety of extra fish that you can put into the aquarium rather than sticking to more of the, of the traditional reef safe species. Now the first thing you want to consider is whether you're going to go down the tang route or whether you're going to go down the butterfly route. They often don't mix very well. With tougher species such as the raccoon butterfly you can get away with, with tangs, but a lot of the more peaceful species of butterfly can get bullied and intimidated. Having a butterfly tank is often a lot easier than having a tang tank. You tend to get less problems with feeding and disease and things like that. Some butterfly species are incredibly difficult to keep but there is also quite a few that are relatively straightforward and they're quite entertaining in their behaviour and their coloration as well. If you're going to have a butterfly themed tank then most people want either a copper bound or a long nose butterfly in there. Copper bounds are one of the more peaceful species and you want to get that one in first and get it settled before you put any other fish in with it if you can. Copper bounds and long noses can't be mixed together and can only be housed singly, so it's going to come down to a choice of which of the two you'd rather have. After you've got one of those, then I must suggest the next would be to go for some of the more peaceful butterfly species where you can really cram quite a few of them in if you want to. Things like the Pakistani butterfly and the pyramid butterfly can be kept in pairs and in groups as well and generally behave much better this way than single specimens. You can also look at the other peaceful butterflies such as the raffles butterfly as well. These will provide quite a lot of colour and movement to the tank and it creates something that's really quite different to what most people typically see in a reef aquarium. After you've chosen those you've also got a few other things you can put into the tank as well. If you're careful on your choice of mobile inverts, you can also include a wide variety of dwarf buffers. Several dwarf buffers can be housed together, and indeed you can get away with as many as a dozen different species in the tank if you wanted to. Now it's generally safer to stick to one dwarf buffer of each species. If you are putting buffers into a tank that already has buffers, you need to keep a little bit of eye on them on the introduction time, and you're often better trying to increase them. Put them all in in one group or add them in just a couple of groups of several puffers at a time. Most popular choice is probably the Valentini puffer because it's relatively cheap and it's widely available. But things like the white spotted puffer are absolutely stunning and if you are lucky enough to find one, they do look really cool in the tank. You can also include quite a few dwarf angels in the tank as well. Now most people only put one dwarf angel in the tank, but actually if you're using the mirror trick that we discussed earlier, and you're adding dwarf angels several at a time. You could easily fit three or four dwarf angels in a tank this size if you keep to some of the more peaceful species. So things like the keyhole angel and the uh, Evely angel are good additions. Also consider some of the larger ones such as the Singapore angel and the bicolor angel as well. Bicolors can be quite tricky, so avoid very small specimens and ensure it is feeding well before it goes in. 
They can also be kept in groups as well, but you need to make sure they're all around the same size and they're all growing at the same time if you want to try and do this. It can be done in a 500 litre. You'll probably find a little bit more success in keeping them in groups in a larger aquarium, such as a 1,000 litre. Let's look at other, some of the other more peaceful dwarf angels, such as the fishes and things like that as well. Um, you might want to avoid some of the more aggressive ones like the flames and the lemon peels if you're adding multiple ones and sometimes flames and lemon peels will attack butterflies as well um, so just make sure your butterflies are a little bit bigger than your dwarf angels if you're going for one of the more aggressive species of dwarf angels ok so this gives you some ideas for a sort of basis of stocking a 500 litre tank but of course the options are almost endless with hundreds of species to choose from I like the bulk of those are quite widely available in the trade, but there's also quite a lot more unusual fish that you could add as well. Plus, of course, you've always got the option of going down the predator route, which is basically just an upscaled version of what we looked at in the 200 litre last week, with small lionfish and more eels and things like that as well. So you sh shouldn't feel too restricted of just going for the sort of standard pair of clowns and yellow tang and regal tang, which is is what you see in most people's tanks. Want to be a little bit more adventurous and choose something that's a little bit different and it's going to have a little bit more variety of species and behaviours than just the, the same old run of the mill stuff that you see everywhere. So thanks for watching this. Hopefully it's given you some great ideas on, on different stocking plans you could do for your 500 litre reef aquarium. And uh, be sure to subscribe and like and share this video Pop back next Sunday where you'll see what we tackle in our next subject.